Good morning, St. Luke's. It's so good to see everyone here on this rather dark day. Oh, kind of reminds us of the tune, so unlike yesterday. So thank you for being here. As you can hear in today's gospel, there is a lot going on. As we heard last week, in these last days of Lent, our lectionary readings in John are long and rich. John is on a roll. There is no writer's block there. In fact, one could preach a sermon from just a section or a couple of sentences. A long sermon. <laughs> At least half hour. So I was tempted to preach for about that time, but I resist it. I did not want to test your patience. You are welcome. <laughs> However, I do want to highlight themes and behavior that John brings to us. Spiritual and literal understandings, belief and doubt, detachment and compassion and some basic emotions that are part of the human condition. Worry, frustration, and sorrow. We've known this story, or at least parts of it, throughout our lives. Jesus is a friend of Lazarus, and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, who live in, as the scripture states, the village of Bethany. We also know about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Bethany was a small village in Judea near Jerusalem, and today surrounded by the West Bank. We do not know how Mary and Martha got the message to Jesus that their brother was dying and where Jesus was, but John tells us that he got the message and did not go right away, but said these words, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. In my imagination, this decision made by Jesus not to drop everything and rush to his friend's deathbed got Mary and Martha, as they say back home, some kind of mad. They are P.O. ticked off, let down by their brother's friend, Jesus. I think that we all can identify with sisters, these sisters about to lose their brother. They call Jesus, who they believe have the power, has the power to keep their brother alive, and he is a no-show. There is something about us, most of us, all of us, that when we ask, we want a response. Serves to reason. Parents, when you call your children, you want a response. When I was a child, my parents would sometimes say, Horace, don't you hear me calling you? This means get busy and go. Teenagers, kids on various social media, texting, or on TikTok, will get frustrated if a friend has not responded in 10 seconds. Or as a former chaplain, I observed many family members pleading with doctors for some medication to save a family member. Most of us have been in a situation where we have wanted actions and answers to help loved ones and ourselves and wondered why the doctor was not there. Or in our darkest hours, seemingly why God was not there. Instead of being with Lazarus in his dying hour, Jesus decides to hang out with his disciples talking some heavy theological stuff that the disciples have a hard time understanding. Daylight versus darkness, sleep versus dead. 
So we can put ourselves in Martha's and Mary's shoes and hear the frustration and blame in their voices. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It is unwavering faith in Jesus and disappointment that the sorrow they were experiencing could have been avoided only if Jesus had been there. As I've said before, the words of these sisters stir in us, resonate with us, move us. Perhaps we've all been Mary and Martha and cried out, God, where are you? If you had been here and if you care, my husband, my wife, my mother, my father, my sister, brother, friend, my child would not have died. And in the midst of all this sorrow, confusion, disappointment, untimeliness, God is at work in the moment. The Bible tells us that Jesus was disturbed and moved by the sorrow that he saw. When he saw this weeping, not only by Mary's weeping, but the community's, his great compassion and own feelings of losing his friend, Jesus also wept. These words remind us that in the midst of our sorrows, our concerns, our failures, Our loss is our pain and suffering. For reasons unknown, we are not alone. God, in the manifestation of Jesus, weeps with us. Despite their bewilderment, here Jesus offers comfort to Mary and Martha by claiming that he is resurrection and life which is a cornerstone of our faith and calls dead Lazarus to life. This is a foreshadowing of his own life, death and resurrection into new life. Perhaps no other passage of Scripture captures the divinity and humanity of Jesus than John 11. Here Jesus reassures us through Martha and Mary of the ever-changing power into new life that we are given by God. Jesus does not just call Lazarus out of the tomb of death, but John wants us to know Jesus' words, unbind him. Jesus' last words in this moment are unbind him and let him go. Go to new life. God will be glorified. Unbind. As was Jesus' Jewish custom in many cultures, the body would have been wrapped for burial. As in death, when we have physical injuries, the body is wrapped for healing. Some of you know when healing occurs, we become unbound to live that new life with a new or healed organ, a limb, a knee replacement, a hip replacement, a prosthetic. There is rejoicing when one gets a chance to live again, the feeling of being born again, a resurrected life. And while we can observe when it is the body, for so many of us, we have carried or carry a mental or emotional death that cannot be seen or spoken are barely thought. The cloths are wrapped so tightly in the mental illness of depression and sadness. The emotional death in a marriage or relationship, the feeling of despair from losing a loved one, and that you are in the tomb waiting for God's miracle through prayer, medication, or therapeutic intervention, and hear the voice of Jesus Christ saying, come out, unbind her, and let her go. Unbind him and let him go. Unbind them and let them go. When I served as a hospital chaplain, 
One afternoon, I received a page to the ER. I arrived and saw a young man, I will call John, who asked me what did he need to do to be saved. I lit up. How biblical. Hollywood could not have staged it more perfectly. Well, I'm always happy to share the good news of Jesus and salvation, which I gave him the very simple response of belief in Jesus and you shall be saved. But I had an inkling that there was more to the question than personal salvation. So I asked him, why did he want to be saved? And he told me that so when he took his life, he will be with his dad in heaven. I was not expecting that answer. I decided to bring the dad into the room and asked him, how did he think that his dad would feel about him taking his life? And he said that he thought it would make his dad very sad. After a much longer conversation, I discovered that he felt that he did not do everything he could to save his dad's life as he was dying at their home and had been suffering from guilt and depression from his father's passing. We discussed God's grace and love and that he did what he could, but never received the care after this trauma and agreed with me that he wanted to come out and become unbound from the cloths of depression. So he agreed with me to find therapy for his depression. Other than the threats on his life, we do not have the details about the new life that Lazarus lived. We know that he was no longer bound. Today, like every day, is an opportunity to come out and become unbound, freed from what is old, dead, and become free. And we at St. Luke's are ready to help unbind you. Although the world may be afraid of you, and even schools forbid you to name who you are. You can say that you are gay or transgendered here, and we celebrate you. For we believe in the Holy Scripture in Psalm 139 that you are wonderfully made by God. God gives us the moral courage to stand at the tomb with you when and a lot like the world sees you and unbind you wherever you are on your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical journey. The prophet Ezekiel saw that miracle of God turning a valley of dry bones into new bodies with flesh and skin and breath, just as Mary and Martha believed that this Jesus could have saved their brother. I invite you this day to believe in the words of the same Jesus, that he is resurrection and life. This new life is not only for these mortal bodies, but as Paul wrote in Romans, the spirit that dwells in you. So whatever cloth is wrapped in your life, whatever has died and needs new life, Jesus is at your tomb calling your name. So my prayer for you this day is to let God through Jesus Christ unbind you from all that is dead and live. Amen.